Salutations, my name is Summer, and this is Cozy Reading with Quaker Cats, and I'm excited because I'm doing the history trail tag today, and the first time I saw it was on Bill Rutenberg's channel, and then I saw Peg at the history shelf do it, and so I thought I had to find this original, <laughs> and the original uh, was, cre it was created by the Novel Nomad. So I will link all three of their videos down below. Uh, and historical fiction. I love history. Historical fiction is one of my favorite things to read. So I'm reading the questions off of here. Okay, number one. The first steps. What book, movie, person, place introduce you to history or historical fiction? So I remember being in fourth grade and our teachers sending all of us kids to the school library to choose a book to write a book report on. And I was looking through the shelves thinking, what book do I want to do a book report on? And I found a book on Hatshepsut, who was a, a woman who ruled as Pharaoh in Egypt. So uh, I just thought that was so amazing and absolutely loved it. And that kind of, you know, the idea that a woman could be Pharaoh and then learning about their traditions and, and culture, culture and stuff like that, was, it was just so neat. And then um, when I went on vacation with my, my, we went on a family vacation. And I honestly, I can't remember going on any other vacation. <laughs> <laughs> besides this one. So this must have been the, the main vacation that we went on. And we went to Virginia Beach. And I remember um, wanting to, my mom wanted to go to the Edgar Casey Center and check that out. And, you know, we wanted to go to the beach. Well, when we were driving there, so we live in Ohio. And when we were, we were, when we were driving there, I was reading, and this is back when I was a kid, I could read in the car. I cannot read. It, and anything moving now, it makes me car sick. But I was reading Haunted Houses uh, by Nancy Roberts. And as I was reading this, we were going through Virginia. And I told them about Shirley Plantation, which is in Charles City, Virginia. And it's about this plantation by the river that is haunted by this this painting. So I'm telling mom and dad about it. And they, this is back before, you know, <laughs> GPS and all that. Anyway, my mom and dad, they got the map out. They checked it out. We went there. We went to Shirley Plantation. So that was another really cool thing of, you know, uh, just happened to be reading that book and getting to go see the place because it wasn't too, that one was not too far out of our way. Okay, um, another thing that, this was when I was a teenager, March 25th, 1996, I uh, read about the Great Depression, and this is not historical fiction, of course, it's, it's history, but this really awakened something in me as a teenager of what family members, you know, um, had gone through. Anyway, so number two, well-trodden path. What is your favorite historical recommendation? So of course I don't just have one. Where are they? <laughs> Where are they? I had to keep moving this so it doesn't shut off. Okay, so this uh, Circling the Sun by Paula McLean. This is about Burl Markham, and this is like 1920s Kenya. So you get that beautiful feel of Kenya and you get to read about this extraordinary woman who pretty much just did whatever she wanted in life and she became a, a pilot. So for a woman to do that at that time was something else. And plus just, uh, it, it's a fantastic, fantastic uh, historical fiction. Another one, Charles Frazier, he's one of my favorite. Um, authors. This is Verena. It's about Jefferson Davis's second wife. So you kind of get that 
uh, get to know a little bit about her life, which most people, we don't focus, <laughs> we don't focus on that when we read about a uh, civil war, but Charles Frazier also wrote a uh, cold mountain. I don't know if, if you've seen the movie, but it is a book and the book is, of course, I think the book is way better, even though the movie was beautiful and it's about the civil war. Uh, I read this book when it was in 98, I think. Yeah, 98. So I was late, almost, I was almost 20. I was like 18, 19. Uh, Sac Sacagawea by Anne Lee Waldo. And I have uh, Prairie by her. That's as thick as this, but I haven't read it yet. And I really need to reread this because I don't know. You know, there's a big difference between, you know, 18, 19, and a 41-year-old. I'm almost 42. So I'm wondering how I would feel about everything the same. And another one I want to recommend is Larry McMurtry. I've read so many of his uh, Dead Man's Walk, The Comanche Moon. I have not read Lonesome Dove, but I loved the miniseries when I was young. Um, also, I love Buffalo Girls. <sighs> He just has so many. Larry McMurtry has so many great books. Okay. Hopefully this didn't. Oh, I have two more. <laughs> Snowflower and the Secret Fan by Lisa C. I love Lisa C's books. And this is about two girls who, uh, I want to say Lily... Oh, and Snowflower. Snowflower and the Secret Fan. I was thinking, okay, Lily and Snowflower. And they are raised differently. Uh, well, you learn about, this is the 1800s in China. And you learn about how they're, they're, their beginnings are very different. But then they both go through the foot binding. They both go through arranged marriages. But uh, the Secret Fan, so women in China had their own language that they would write, uh, which I love that. I love the idea of that. You know, these women that are forced into these lives, yet they had something of their own. So yeah, Snowflower and the Secret Van. Oh, and my the last one. This is my name number one. Like if I had to, if I had to just choose one historical fiction to recommend, it would be the Century Trilogy uh, by Ken Follett. This is the first book, Fall of the Giants. This covers, I want to say, like 20 years. I think it's 1911 through 1924, I think. Um, and the reason why I love him so much is that so many books focus on just Americans. And like, okay, well, America, we did this. Or they're just the British, you know. Okay, well, we're going to have a British family. And, and the Russians are bad. And the Japanese are bad. And, you know, all this is all these people, the Cubans, all these people are bad, except we're going to say the Americans and the British are good. This book, you follow all these different families. Yes, you have an uh, American family. You have a British family. You have uh, a Russian family. You have a German family. I love that it it shows we are all human. And I think certain uh, historical fiction doesn't do that. Like they focus on good guys and bad guys. And Ken Follett doesn't do that because he knows as a human race, we are all good and bad. We are all human beings that ha anyway, love Ken Follett. I also love his um, Pillars of the Earth. I'm not sure. Oh, the Kingbridge. I believe it's called Kingbridge series. And I just read, which I'll talk about that in my next video. I just read uh, The Evening in the Morning, yeah, which is the prequel to The Pillars of the Earth. Exciting. Okay. Good Boots, number three. Good Boots. What's your favorite historical fashion error? era? Era. Error. <laughs> when it comes to fashion, I'm like, error. Uh, era. Okay, so I would have to say, and I'm just guesstimating, 1920s to 1940s because I know in the 1920s they got rid of um, corsets they weren't as popular 
But my favorite style is the dapper style. And it doesn't matter uh, if it's on a man or a woman. I just love that style. I remember I watched uh, Colette, that movie Colette. And I was just like, gosh, I, I just love that. I love suspenders. I love vests. I love, you know, those type of pants and jackets. And I'm thinking, why don't I ever go towards that style? And I think it's because, number one, money. You know, what am I going? I have to choose what I spend my money on. And it's usually my cats and books but after the bills are taken care of. But also, I'm not in a area where you could even buy that style you know so I would have to like order it online and who wants to order it it's really hard to find clothing I think online anyway number four close to home what is a historical read set in your home country so I try to um get books closer to home and I this is probably not even about Ohio I don't know I haven't read it yet <laughs> But <laughs> I wanted to show it off. Uh, the Ohio. It's a Whitewater Dynasty. And this is the second book. So I don't know what the first book is. This is just one that I happened to pick up. I think at a thrift store. I think at a thrift store. Maybe a library, library sale. But I'm thinking thrift. Anyway, it's by Helen Lee Pohl. And I'm thinking it's just about the Ohio River. Um, what I have read is The Pioneers by David McCullen. McCullough? Anyway, this is, I want to say, 1700s, and it's about the making. It has a lot about the Ohio River, but it, um, Marietta, how Marietta, Ohio, was founded. So I, I thought it was very interesting. Talks about slavery, how Ohio was not supposed supposed to have any slavery in it when it was being made, and um, there was a lot of other uh, facts in here that I and honestly I need to read it again because it was very it had a lot of facts, a lot of things in there that I would like to. I'm sure I forgot some things. Okay, something I just started reading. Which I'm, I mean, this has been on my TBR forever, and I'm not very far. I'm only on page 26. But that's The Frontiersman by Alan Eckerd. So I live half an hour away from Shell Coffee, and that's where this uh, book is kind of based, kind of set. Um, it talks about Simon Kenton, who right now is calling himself Simon Butler because of certain circumstances. Here's Sylvie. And um, it also talks about Tecumseh, when he was born, how there was a, fall, a shooting star, uh, which they called the panther who cr crossed the sky or something like that. And so, which kind of reminded me of like Jesus. <laughs> um, the story, you know, that they saw that shooting star and that's why they named him Tecumseh which means Panther in the Sky or something like that. And then uh, right where I stopped at was uh, Blue Jacket. Blue Jacket was introduced, like how he came about. So I'm absolutely loving this, which is dangerous because I have so many other things I need to be reading. But uh, this is, besides War and Peace, this is what I'm really wanting to read. Oh, and I'm really enjoying my BookTube Spin book, An Equal Music by Vikram Seth. Oh, it's beautiful. I'm just loving everything I'm reading right now. Okay, let's see. This is almost done. <laughs> um, okay, number five, the trail not taken. What historical errors do you avoid? I could not think of any anything that I would avoid, but that's how it is with my reading. If you guys uh, if you guys watch my videos, you know I I'm all over the place with my reading. I love everything whether it's nonfiction, whether it's you know even I even some romances I actually love um uh you know yeah I I pretty much love everything and I was going to say actually as I was starting to think about it I'm not really that big of a fan of horror even though I do love Stephen Stephen King's one of my favorite authors I don't consider him horror um because most of his books I don't think they are but I was thinking maybe that's one that I wouldn't be that into is like 
historical murders and stuff, I was like, yeah, I'm even, I would even be interested in those because I wanted to read the five and I didn't get to it. I had got it from the library as an ebook and I just forget I have ebooks. It's so horrible. Um, so I had to send it back before I even got to it. But that's about uh, the five women who were murdered by Jack the Ripper and their lives, because that's the truth. Victims usually don't get any kind of, like, people don't talk about them. And if they do talk about them, they usually talk about them in a way like it's their fault. You know, like the only thing I had heard about those women were, they were like prostitutes, which why does that make it okay that you were murdered? Like, oh, you put yourself in that situation. <laughs> that doesn't make it okay. But I've, I find that a lot. Anyway, that is not the point. The point is I, there is not any his, history or historical fiction that I can think of that I would avoid reading. Number six, trail map. What historical reads are on your TBR? I could have a huge list. I'm not going to do that to you guys. One thing I'm super excited about is that you guys know that I'm reading War and Peace. And guys, guys, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting close. Um, I think I have a little over 200 pages left of War and Peace. Now, War and Peace is set in 1812. Next month, I'm doing a read along with a group of friends. Uh, and we're doing it through Voxer, so if you are interested, please let me know. Uh, we're reading The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas, and this book starts out in 1815. I just found that out this morning because I was just looking through the introduction, like, do I want to read the introduction, or is that going to ruin something for me? And I just read that, it just in the very beginning. Okay, so other books on my TBR... The Bastard by John Jakes. I started this. So I, you guys probably have already heard this story. But my mom read like this whole series when she was pregnant with me. Like she flew through them. And so my whole life I've been told I need to read this series. And now I'm in my 40s and I'm finally going to get to it. I started it. I'm on page 242. And I set it aside. And I don't know why because I was really enjoying it. Another one I want to get to this year is The Last Kingdom by Bernard, Bernard Cornwell. That's the first book in his series about, I believe it's about Vikings. I'm sure Anglo-Saxons are in there too. A book that I, I didn't even realize I hadn't read. I, I, I was talking about it and I was like, oh yeah, I read the trilogy. And then I started thinking about the books and I thought the last thing I remember is A Crocodile. Somebody get eaten by a crocodile. <laughs> and I couldn't remember. And then I realized I have not read Heaven and Hell. This is the final book in the trilogy. And I have not read it. I read North and South and Love and War. I have got to remedy that because I love this series trilogy. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about is, and I have to make sure this doesn't disappear. I picked this up at Ollie's. I don't know if you guys have an Ollie's near you and you're just hesitant to go in because you think it's just like gonna be a junk store and you're not gonna like anything in there. I have to tell you, every Ollie's I've been into, which I've been to one an hour away and I've been one half an hour away, their book selections are fantastic. I, brand new books, Stephen King, um, all different kinds of, all different genres, are, they're super cheap. I got this for $3.99. Most of the time they're $3.99 or even some are $1.99. Brand new books. Okay, so this is The Dying Grass by William T. Volman, uh, a novel of the Nez Perce War. Have you guys heard about this? Because I had never even heard about this. This is not an area that I usually read about, I guess. But I want to read a little bit just in case you haven't heard about it. So it says... Defrauded and intimidated at every turn, the Nez Perces finally went on the war path in 1877, subjecting the U.S. Army to its greatest defeat since Little Bighorn the previous year. As they fled nearly 1,200 miles from northeast Oregon across Montana to the Canadian border before surrendering, Bowman's main character is not the legendary Chief Joseph, but his pursuer, General Olive 
Oliver Otis Howard, a brave, shy, tormented, devoutly Christian Civil War veteran. In his, this novel, we see him as a commander, father, son, husband, friend, and killer in an ever-altering myriad of relations with soldiers, scouts, and hostiles. The dying grass teems with figures on both sides of the conflict, including Chief Joseph's 12-year-old daughter, Sounds of Running Feet, his two wives, Springtime and Good Woman, the shell-shocked Colonel David Perry, who lost the war's first battle, and his best friend, the war chief Looking Glass, who trusted that treaties with Americans would save him, and Howard's personal loyal, yeah, personally loyal, but increasingly anti-war decamp, a decamp, C. E. S. Wood. With varying decree, degrees of understanding, these characters follow the tra trajectories of their larger groups and the forces beyond the war. <laughs> And it really is this big. Like the notes, it's over 1,200 pages. The notes come in in the back. I've never heard of this author. I've never heard of this story. I think what will probably happen with this is it will probably sit on my shelf until next January and I may take a year to read it. Because it seems like it's very dense. Uh, and that's just me. Maybe not. Maybe it won't be. Because that's actually why I put the Frontiersman down. And I, I actually, this is why I've said I've had it on my shelf for so many years because I was worried it was going to be a really dense read. But it is not. Like, it, it's easy. It would be really easy to fly through now that I've picked it up. And I, oh, it's so good. It's not of Ohio. I mean, there's other, but mainly Ohio, which is where I live. Okay, guys. Oh, number seven, pioneers. What historical person inspires you? I mean, what historical fiction doesn't? Well, okay, there are some bad people. <laughs> there are some really bad people in history. I guess I shouldn't say that. Uh, I think of uh, Sojourner Truth and her I Ain't a Woman. I remember I was a teenager when I first read that. And she is one that has always stuck with me. Had Shepsa again, what she did. Uh, someone who I'm going to be reading, and I wish I had the book with me, but my mom has it right now. I will be reading it in April. So if anybody is interested in reading it with me, it's called Chrysalis. And uh, I forget who the author is, but it is the story of Maria Sibylla Moran. Marianne. She was born, I want to say... 1647, 1674. Um, and she is the reason, she was a naturalist and she was born in German, Germany. And she's the reason we know that caterpillars and butterflies are the same. <laughs> They're the same insect. For I guess for so long, people thought they were different because they look completely different. They didn't realize that they went through a transformation. So she is the one who's studying, through studying, she found that out. And I, the book is full of beautiful illustrations that she uh, drew. And so I cannot wait to read it, but I've been saving it for April. So I told my mom last year when I gave it to her, I was like, okay, because my mom will have books that I give her sitting by her bed for years. But I, when I gave it to her last year, I said, now listen, I'm going to be reading this in April because there's a springathon. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody wants to read that with me, let me know. It may be a, a really dense read also uh, because it's uh, nonfiction, I believe. Okay, number eight, tag your fellow history nerds. So this actually was created back in um, three years ago. A lot of the videos were three years old. So like I said, I just saw it on Bill Rutenberg's channel, and then I saw Peg at the History Shelf do it. And uh, so I don't know who uh, else has done it. I don't know who else would be interested in doing it. So if you are interested, you are tagged. Um, please leave any comments down below about um, any of these books. What are your favorite history or historical fiction books that you've read? Or what are some that you're looking forward to reading that you put on your TBR? Um, yeah, so I guess that's it. Everybody is sleeping. 
my messy place. There's May. Hey, make her. Yeah, she's too tired. Everybody's asleep. I don't know where everybody else is. All right. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day and bye.